very good morning to all of you. We have a very handsome person on the desk. Sir Karan, you are most and warmly welcome to the Firebird campus on behalf of our trustees, students and faculty. I extend my warm greetings to you and the entire IDT members and Mr. Aditya for you also. Indeed, it's a great privilege to have people from the top class cities who bring a lot of experience, world class experience. Mumbai, the city never sleeps. If you go to Mumbai, you don't find different between 12 o'clock in the afternoon and midnight, 2 o'clock. People keep on moving and he's one of the CEOs with the global design and with global aspiration to do something different for the entire young minds of this country and also be a part of the great revolution, what we call digital revolution. And I think if Mr. Modi, if our Prime Minister Modi meets him, he'll give a big applause to him because he likes all young people who are in the digital revolution. You know that Firebird is a great endurance towards technology, innovation and excellence to nurture the young minds of this country. When you talk about digitalization of our life, it's a very huge phenomenon. Our life will not start early morning also without digital help. I think most of us, we don't see the gods photos also, rather we take a mobile, start looking at what is in WhatsApp. Then tell me. For me, Dr. Tamil Selvi, or other teachers who are there with me, we see the males first. What is the male that is going to create my day happy or let me give a small, small, you know, small one things, how that the life is so, you know, uh, became so technology savvy for us. I am a little more inclined on the technology since 2009. Before that also it was there. Do you know that I get a reminder to buy a shampoo. L'Oreal shampoo. I get a reminder because I buy L'Oreal hair color. I buy a L'Oreal hair color. If I had to go to Coimbatore and find a 560 rupees hair color i have to spend one hour one side one hour from another side by the time i go i don't get my dark brown or brown color i end up with dissatisfaction but i open amazon look at i have 12 colors options and i get in next day delivery do you know that how if i am doing hair coloring the next product is that yes, this guy has got a hair, he should need a shampoo. He need a shampoo. If he's having a shampoo, the next message comes to be customized message conditioner. See how it works. It works through e commerce, e commerce algorithms, e commerce algorithms. If you look for a mobile of Samsung, immediately another company, another brand follows you. If you look for admission of fiber, Great Lakes comes. You know, other institutions are lined up. What happens is, today we are driven by algorithms, e-commerce. Our life is with full of online business, online life and online transaction. We are mapped every behavior. We are being mapped. Even your, our cognitive thinking is also mapped. You know that cognitive thinking? It is being mapped. In last four years, I have been conducting a survey that what is your mindset in the morning, what is your mindset in the afternoon, what is the mindset in the late evening. I might have told that, Mr. Karan, during my research, Mr. Karan, I am doing a research. The moods of young minds in 24 hours. I find the WhatsApp survey, what they use, what they use, 60% they use pathetic crime all in metro cities and they will use it. So we are you know covered with complete 
digital, you know, facts. We are being captured up here, we are being captured our, you know, buying pattern, living pattern, everything. How can you be not a part of this technological revolution? You can't be a retailer today. You will be living with another, you know, 50, 60 square meters of your neighbor. But if you are having an e-commerce site, even if you have a small product, you can reach the world. The logistics supply chain management is evolved because of e-commerce. All that e-commerce, all the business requires your knowledge and skill in the digital world. And digital marketing is one of the most important, important. Analytics is part of digital marketing. Do you know that? The fintech is a part of digital marketing. Your logistic and supply chain is a part of digital marketing. So today digital marketing is the number one in its own platform. That's where we would like to invite people like Mr. Karan Shah to enlighten you towards this excellent journey what is required. Every bank transaction is digitalized, every postal is digitalized. I think we forgot that our inline letters. Anybody knows that inline letters, blue letter? Yes. When you wrote last time? Maybe 20 years back. I have not written I have, I have not written last 30 years an inline letter. I forgot how is inline letter also. Because every you are in a live call, you are in a live call, in a video call. So things are changing and today in that business Mr. Karan Shah is going to tell you the secret of digital marketing, how to survive, how to grow, how to make your position most powerful in the world of digital revolution. Mr. Karan Shah, you are most welcome and uh, my students will take care of you. Let me tell you. My students are very challenging, dynamic, very, very active, powerful, powerhouses, what not. And uh, they are one among the top hardcore, you know, life they are spending. They spend the morning from 7.30 to late evening 10.30. High stamina they carry. We have a pattern of, you know, starting our classes in 8.30. And 12:50 uh, they close. One o'clock they board into the buses. They travel around 20, 30 kilometers around the city. They work for four, five hours. Again they come back. They have a break of 15, 20 minutes. They have a dinner. Again classes. Again work. So guys, congratulations for continuing such a hard work. <laughs> we, we will change, we will redefine, we will definitely redefine fiber and its goals and its vision. And you keep up our, you know the moral values and professional values. I hope you will bring the laureate to the you know, kind of brief what our trustees have and you make a, you don't know, a history in the world of business study. God bless you all of you. Thank you very much. Good morning to one and all present here. I'm Jitendra Ramnath, here to give a fantabulous introduction about our respected speaker, Mr. Karin Shah. He is an educator TEDx speaker and founder of Indian Institute of Digital Education, which is India's first edtech school for digital marketing. After specializing in e-commerce strategies from Harvard University, he returned to India and set up IADE. He identified global transformation as the future and recognized the lack of digitally skilled human resources as the need of the whole. IADE's efforts is to bridge the digital skill gap for upskilling of 2,35,000 plus students and professionals via courses, webinars, seminars and workshops. I it also try leading corporations like Mahindra and Mahindra, Volkswagen, Asian Paints, Pfizer, Cipla, ST Lauda, Leo Bonnet, Public Worldwide and World Bank in Digital Skills. He is also visiting faculty at IIMs and top institutions across the country. He is a frequent front page writer for reputed publications such as Forbes, Education Times, Youth Magazines, Business World. Thank you, sir.
Mr. Jitendra, I request our director to present the bouquet to our chief guest, Mr. Karan Shah. Good morning to one and all present here. I take a great privilege in welcoming our chief guest, Aditya Shastri, who is known as a modern monk and he likes to balance a digital market with spirituality. He is a leading trainer at Indian Institute of Digital Education, which is India's number one education technology school for digital marketing. He is an expert in branding strategies, content marketing and social writing. He has trained more than 2,000 students and working professionals coming from various backgrounds. Aditya sir has developed digital marketing programs for establishment and publicly listed companies and client leads like Pfizer, Deepa Groups, Mahindra Group, and Public Worldwide, BBH, Leo Burnett, Gautrich Professionals, Adobe de France, Blowfish Digital, along with other companies. He is associated with 70 plus leading digital marketing agencies like Kintec, Digita, White River Media, Pivot, and other leading agencies. He is a visiting faculty at top institutions across India, including IIT, Bilai, UPG College, and various other reputed institutions. Apart from digital marketing, he is the chief content strategist and a YouTube marketing specialist in the domain of spirituality. His spirituality YouTube channel has more than 2 million views and a unique presence of 40,000 monthly users. Thank you sir and welcome you sir. Without any further delay, I welcome our Chief Guest of the Day, Mr. Karan Shah, to take over the session. Okay, check. Can you all hear me? Yes. Hi. Yes. Good morning. Yes. Are you fresh? Are you sleepy? Yes. Fresh? Do you want to learn digital marketing? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Uh, I'm going to check. Cool. Let's quickly get started. Thank you so much for the introduction uh, to all the students of Fiber Director. Thank you, professors, for being here. And thank you all, all the students out here today morning. Um, I'm quickly going to get started. Uh, and I'm going to ask you all some questions, okay? Right now, are you all with me? Is everyone paying attention at the back? <laughs> Do you agree that technology has changed our lives? Yes. Absolutely? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm going to ask you some questions right now. Okay, I'm going to ask you some questions and I'm going to show you some slides on my screen. Okay, if you guys agree, only and only if you agree with what I show you on the screen next. Pay attention. If you agree with what I show you on the screen next. Okay, I want you all to respond to me in two words. Okay, those two words are what? Yes. I can't hear you. What? Yes. Yes yes. yes, yes. Okay, so I'm going to show you a few things on my screen. I am going to show you how the world has changed, how technology has changed most things. If you guys agree with what you see on the screen, you will respond to me in two words, and those two words are? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. yes, yes, yes. Okay, let's try. Okay, so let me try with the first one. I think, guys, not so long ago, look on the left side. Not so long ago, a marathon used to be a running marathon where people ran from one end of the city to another end. Lap 1, lap 2, lap 3, lap 4, lap 5. But today, I think marathons look a lot like that. Season 1, episode 1, season 1, episode 2, season 1, episode 3, season 1, episode 4. Do you agree? Yes, yes? Yes, yes. Do you all watch uh, Netflix, Hotstar, any of these shows, any of these? Yes, yes? Yes. Okay, let's ask the next question. Not so long ago, at least in my house, 
I used to have menus and brochures of all my restaurants nearby. If on a Sunday I wanted to order food from outside, I would remove all the menus and brochures of different restaurants that I have. But today, I don't have menus or brochures of any restaurant in my house. I'm either using Zomato, Swiggy, or one of these apps. Do you? Yes, yes? Yes, yes. Okay, awesome. <clears throat> I think not so long ago, at least for me, I don't know about you guys, but every time that I would sit on the pot, I used to have a newspaper uh, right next to me and I would spend a couple of minutes reading. But today, when I sit on the pot, 5 minutes becomes 15 minutes, okay? Because I'm actually on my phone. I'm either Facebooking, Instagramming, checking my emails, Whatsapping, Snapchatting, not Snapchatting. But I'm doing one of these things. Do you agree? Yes, yes? Yes, yes. How many of you guys are also on the phone on the pot sometimes? If you are, show me your hands. Ah. Seems like most of you guys. And any of you all who do not take the phone on the pot? Uh, he needs to concentrate, that's right. <laughs> anyway, yes, yes, yes? Okay. And guys, I must tell you that because of COVID, okay, I must tell you that because of COVID, our digital consumption has become extremely high. We're addicted to our phones. Can I say that? Yes, yes? Yes, yes. Yeah. I totally think that this is all true and this is all happening to all of us right now. So, you know, I was reading this article online uh, on his website called news18.com and it said that the Indian youth on an average spends six hours on the internet every day. True or false? Yes. True or false? Yes. You know what? In fact, when I was reading that article further, I scrolled down further and it said that during COVID, digital consumption, all types of digital devices, laptops, phones, smartwatches, TV, digital consumption went up to 12 hours a day. Do you still think this is true or false? True. It's true, right? Absolutely true. We're spending so many hours a day online, right? So. My quick question to you guys is, show me with your fingers, okay, one, two, three, four or five. How many hours do you think that you spend on the internet every day? Show me, raise your hands, everybody, raise your hands. How many? Stop showing three hands, yeah, till it was heavy. <laughs> but okay, I can see that everyone's putting up their hands, right? We're spending so many hours on the internet. So I have the next question for you. Where is our audience today? Where? Where? Why? If you want to promote a product in the future, where will you find your audience? You know, I'll tell you where you'll find your audience today. You will find your audience in their house, sleeping on their beds, with their room's lights switched off, but their phone's lights switched on. The next image I show you on my screen I guarantee you is how you all look like at night before you sleep. If you guys agree with the next image that I show you on my screen, I really want to see a big smile on your face. Okay? Let's check if this is how you all look like at night before you sleep. Yes, yes? Yes, yes? yes. But here's the reality, my friends, that this person out here is the customer, okay? This person out here is the customer and this device that the person is holding today is genuinely the new method to market to this customer. Do we all agree? Yes, yes? Yes, yes. Right? This is genuinely our situation every day. Now, all I want to do over this next one hour with you guys is I know that we all are the person like that on the bed. But I also want to show you all in the next half an hour, one hour, one hour, I want to show you how we can market through that phone. Are we clear? I want to show you some real cool strategies on how you can also do this instantly and you can also market. And instead of being that person in the bed, your business is communicating to customers through the phone. Cool? That's the agenda for the next 45 minutes. Are you with me? Yes. Would this interest you? Okay, awesome. Let's go. So, the next question is, 
What is this? What are these guys doing on their phones? What are you guys doing on your phones? Instagram. Sorry, what? Snapchat. WhatsApp. YouTube. Facebook. Instagram. I think I think I will just categorize this into two major things. Okay. I think that most people today are either on some social media website which is Instagram, WhatsApp, Facebook, Snapchat, Quora, YouTube, any of these or if they are not on a social media website I think they end up going to Google searching something and going to some website and then they are there. <coughs> yes, yes, no, no. Yes yes. yes, yes, right? Like for example, like for example, if I wanted to go to like let's say Goa for a vacation, the first thing I would do is I would check best places to visit in Goa. I would go to Google, find some blog, click on it and then read some information. Have you guys done something similar? Yes, yes? Yes, yes. Okay, awesome. So that basically means my friends that if you want people to come to your website, it basically means that if you want people to come to your website, your e-commerce website or anyone else's website that you are marketing, there are two methods to get people to your website. Either you got to be really popular on a social media website. Okay, there are two ways. Mainly, I would say there are two ways to get people to come to your website. Either you are popular on a social media website. Should you be popular on all social media websites? Yes, no. Yes? Really? Is Sachin Tendulkar popular in all sports? No. Or which sport? Is Messi popular in all sports? No. Which sport? Do you think you need to be popular on all social media platforms? No. You need to be popular on that social media platform on which your audience is. For example, if your audience is a grandparent, which social media platform do you need to be popular on? What app do your grandparents use the most? Facebook? Okay, then maybe Facebook. I would say WhatsApp. I would say WhatsApp. My grandfather till date, every day will send me forwards. <laughs> Most of them are spam messages, right? But you see his, his consumption of media is WhatsApp. But if I have to promote something to you guys, you know which channel I would use? Instagram. That's about it. Instagram, right? And if I have to promote something to your parents, which platform? Facebook. Ah, see, there are the answers. So the answer is your grandparent gets WhatsApp, your parent gets Facebook and you get Instagram. You need to be popular on a social media website where your target audience is. Yes, yes? Yes, yes. So either you become popular on a social media website or you ensure that when somebody goes to Google and then they type something related to you, they find your website on it. Does that make sense? Either when you go to Google, do you know when you go to Google and you type something on the top, what comes on the top? Ads. What? Ads and what comes under it is known as SEO, organic websites. If you don't understand this, let me show you again. Generally, this is how a result page on Google looks like. Yes? What comes on the top is generally ads. You pay Google to show your website out there. And what comes at the bottom, which is in green color out there, is generally organic websites. Without paying Google, your website's ranking there. This is basic. I just wanted to clarify this with everybody. So far, so good, everybody? Yes? Awesome. So, today what I'm going to do is over the next some time, I am going to teach you all or I am actually going to discuss with you guys two things. Social media and Google search. Are we clear? Yeah? Simple agenda. And I am actually going to show you how to do these things. Just the foundation basics together. Okay? Let's go. So, over the next few minutes, I'm going to talk about search engine marketing. Okay, what you actually see out here, when you go to Google and you type something out there, you generally end up seeing ads, right? Yes or no? Okay, so I want to quickly ask you a question. Let's say I went to Google and I typed wooden furniture online. Let's say my house is being redone, okay, my house is under renovation and I typed wooden furniture online. Would you guys click on the things in which I put the red color? Have you ever looked at those? Do you scroll through them? So I have a question for you. If you were a company which sold wooden furniture, 
if you owned a company or if you work for a company which sold wooden furniture i have a question for you would you rather have a shop and wait in your shop for customers to come or would you rather ensure that when somebody types wooden furniture online your ad shows out here what would you do option 1 or option 2 option 2 right because okay tell me one thing if someone goes to google and types wooden furniture online in how many days do you think they are going to actually buy wooden furniture in the next 5 years or maybe in the next 1 month maybe next 1 month right so it's much better to find customers from here because the customers buying intention is high do you understand buying intention the customer actually has an intention to buy otherwise would he type wooden furniture online kya would you type would you type for time pass or wooden furniture online you would never do that you would type because you really want to buy are you with me everybody right so sometimes you click on these ads sometimes you also click on those ads right and this is all google ads search engine marketing so if you are a business instead of putting up a shop or instead of going door to door to advertise i would say the first place that you should actually advertise is here should you rather advertise on google or should you rather advertise on social media where do you think social media or google instagram or google instagram or google let me ask you a question again where do you think will you find a higher buying intent customer google where will you find a higher buying intent when the customer's buying intention is very high google google or instagram google google what do you go to instagram for crawling reels just chill time pass are you actually wanting to buy something when you're on instagram no but when you specifically type on google you're actually in the mood to buy in the next 30 or 40 days you yourself have typed this and you want to buy it. so my friends my first tip to you guys is that if you are going to run a business or promote a business you have to do google ads cool now in the next some time will you guys be searching for a job yeah. yes or no yes for some people it might be half a year for some people it might be one and a half year from now i'm assuming yes okay i want to show you how this guy okay his name is alex brownstein okay how this guy got a very high paying job do you guys want a high paying job or a low paying job high paying job you want a high paying job right i want to show you how this guy gets a really high paying job using google ads a very high paying job okay he spent 480 rupees to bag a job worth 80 lakhs okay do you want to see how we did that using google ads so i'll tell you a quick story before i show you the case study his name is alex he wanted a job in advertising in the us in new york city where which city yeah. okay so he wants a job in new york city he wants a high paying job in new york city and he wants a job in advertising are we clear what he did is he targeted the top 5 largest advertising companies in new york city okay he found out who are the ceos of the top 5 largest advertising companies in new york city clear yeah? he found their names okay and on their names he made google ads what did he make okay and the google ads said something which i will show you later but he made google ads on their name hoping that one day these top ceos of these five companies will search for their own name have you ever searched for your own name on google uh, yes, yes or no yes sir similarly he was hopeful that these top company ceos will one day google their own name okay now i want you to see how that happened can you play this video for me And can you make it full screen please Read the 
copy. Googling yourself is a lot of fun. Hiring me is fun too. Tell me that was cool. Cool, not cool. Did you understand what happened? He made an ad and the ad said, Googling yourself is a lot of fun, but hiring me is fun too. Okay, that was about it. That was about it. You see how innovative and how simple this was. But he got a job in advertising. The goal was to get a job in advertising and he convinced the CEO of a company to hire him by making an ad on the CEO's name. Interesting? Yeah? So my point is, my friends, you can use Google Ads in any way. Like for example, at IID, uh, click on the next slide one second. It's gone off. Ah. For example, at IID, when somebody search, when somebody across India searches for post graduation in digital marketing, my school's ad shows up first. Are you realizing? If you were a business owner, if you were promoting something, you can pay Google and rank on Google for anything you like but by paying them. Is it cheap or is it expensive? Yeah, it's a little expensive. It's not as expensive as television advertising. It's not as expensive as newspaper advertising, but it's a little expensive. Are we clear? Okay, so that's just the basic. I just wanted to show you some Google ads, okay? And now I wanna talk about the next topic, which is SEO. Search engine, search engine, that side of the back is not talking to me, search engine. Ah, now you open your mouth. Good. Okay, so search engine optimization. If you don't know what that is, under all the ads, after the ads, what's come? What comes is organic results without paying Google ranking on the first page of Google. Okay, are you with me? Does anybody know how to do search engine optimization? Anybody out here? Yeah. How? Sir, by, by doing a, a great uh, website architecture, by increasing our page speed. Very using, nice. Uh, great keywords. Very nice. And by doing all those things on user friendliness in mobile. Very nice answers, my friend. What's your name? Deepan. Deepak. Let's give a nice round of applause to Deepak. I'll show you some very simple ways. Okay. I'm going to show you a four-step method. How many steps? Four-step. I'm going to show you a four-step method. Okay, simple four step method right now. If you get it right, you can watch it today and you can get your website to rank on the first page of Google. Cool? Should I show you? Yes. Yeah? Okay, let's go. First of all, I want to ask you a question. When you search on Google, which link do you click on first? The top link. The top link, yes or no? Which basically means that more than, this is a statistic from Google itself, and it says that 50% of the people who search on Google click on the first link. Which means if your website was uh, on the third link or the fourth link, would that be good for you? Would that be good for you? Yes or no? Yes. No. Hence, it is a must for you to rank on the first page of Google. Tell me one thing, if you were to open up a shop, would you open up a shop in a crowded place or would you open up a shop in a very remote place? Why would you open up in a crowded place? You want visibility, you want footfall, yes or no? Similarly, if you opened up a website and your website did not rank on the first page of Google, it's pointless to make a website. It's like opening up a shop in a very remote place. So if you are actually making a website, then ensure the website ranks on the First page, first link. Are we clear? Okay. How do you do that? How do you do something like that? Okay. Very simple. I'm going to show you a very simple four step method. Okay. The most important thing you need to realize on Google is that whatever you see on Google search, the most important thing you need to realize on Google is that whatever you type on Google search is basis something known as keywords. Yes or no? Yes. You type keywords, right? So one of the first most important things on Google search, my friends, is keywords. And let me give you an example now. Okay. Let's say I go to Google and I type what? 
Word at night? At the back out there, word at night? Running shoes. And you press space bar. Can you see there are a set of options which have come under it? What are those options? They're all keywords. Who's giving you those keywords? How did Google get those keywords? Because of how many people have typed them on Google. Are you understanding? Using data, using information, they know how many people are typing these words. Hence, they are giving you suggestions. Look at their suggestions. Running shoes, running shoes for men, running shoes for women, running shoes low price, running shoes for men under 500, running shoes 90. This is what most people are typing on Google. Are you clear with me? What are these? These are your? These are the most typed keywords for this segment. Are we clear? Okay. So now what you manage to do is you manage to identify some keywords. Have you managed to identify keywords? All you need to do is type something, press spacebar on Google, see the drop down list that comes and that, that drop down list is a set of keywords for you. Are we clear? But step two is you need to find, can you read on top what it says in the blue? Find, find and see results. Find search volume and see results. Google is very nice. You know what they allow you to do? They, they give you how many people are searching for it every month. Do you know Google tells you that? Google tells you how many people are searching for a particular keyword on Google. Okay, it literally tells you that. If you do not know how to use it, you can install this tool on your laptop. You know, you can take a photo of this. It's a very simple tool. It's called Keywords Every Day. Uh, Keywords Everywhere. It's a simple Chrome extension. Okay, you download it, and it will tell you how many people are searching for something on Google. Are you with me? Let's take a simple example. <clears throat> I'm going to give you a couple of keywords. Okay, so I went to Google and I typed shoes. Can you see right under shoes? I'm not sure if you guys can see. It says volume. Can you see volume? Yes. How many people are searching for it? How many? 33 lakh 50 thousand people per month are searching for what? Are searching for shoes. Okay. And can you see under that how many results does Google have for it? Can anyone see that number under it? I think about 316 crore results. How many? So if you wanted your website to rank for the word shoes, how many other websites do you need to beat? 316 crore websites. Google has 316 crore websites which they have information on shoes. Okay, let's look at the next keyword. What is the next keyword? What, what shoes? How many people are searching for running shoes? 5,50,000 people are searching for shoes, for running shoes. How many people were searching for shoes? 33,50,000 for shoes, 33 lakhs. How many people are searching for shoes? 5 lakh? For running shoes, sorry. For running shoes, how many people? And now can you tell me how many results does Google have for it? How many crores? 81 crores. Okay. So if you want your website to rank on Google, how many websites do you need to beat? Previously for shoes, how many websites do you need to beat? And now look at us, look at the next keyword. What is the keyword? Red running shoes. How many people are searching for it per month? How many? And how many results does Google have for it? Forty crore ninety lakhs. So previously you were fighting 316 crore websites, then you were fighting 81 crore websites, now you are fighting 40 crore websites. Okay? Tell me my friends, out of these three, 
Which keyword should your website rank for? All three? All three? How many of you guys say all three? Raise your hands. Nice, raise your hands. Okay, for the people who did not raise their hands, what do you think? Huh? Running shoes and? Red running shoes. How many people think it's option B and C? How many people think it's only option C? How many? Show me. Very nice. Option C is actually the right answer. <laughs> what I'm trying to say, my friends, that you can't win every battle. You can't win every battle. You need to find a battle in which you will win. Are you with me? And hence, when you're doing SEO, the most important thing that most people forget is that they try ranking their website for everything. But you need to realize that if I tried ranking for the word shoes, I would have to beat 316 crore websites. If I tried to beat running shoes, I would have to beat 80 crore websites. Red running shoes, 40 crore websites. So in out of the three cases, in which case do I have less number to less number of people to compete with? Option A, B, or C? C. But in terms of search volume, C is the lowest, right? Only 4,400 people are searching for it per month. But what you need to know, and what most people forget in SEO, that SEO is all about buying intention. Okay? I'm gonna plot these three keywords on a screen for you right now. You see, the first keyword on top is called shoes. Are you with me? And now I want you to look at x-axis and y-axis. Right? You see, here over here, I've called something known as search volume. Search volume low, search volume high. Are you with me? And here on this axis, I have put something known as what? Can you read it? Yeah. What is it called? Will the person buy or not buy? Okay, will the person buy? Low chances. Will the person buy? What? High chances. So now my question to you guys out here is that if you genuinely went to Google and typed shoes, do you think you would buy shoes in the next one week? If you went to Google and typed running shoes, do you think you would buy high chance or low chance? But let's say if you went to Google and you type red running shoes. Now do you have a higher chance or a lower chance of actually buying? Yes. Because you've made up your mind. You know the color you want. You want red. You know you want running shoes. Are we clear? Higher chance of actually buying. Hence, when you're doing SEO, my friends, it's super important to figure out which keyword has the highest buying intention. Because then, you will be targeting keywords which may not have a lot of search volume. They have low search volume, but they'll have high conversion rate. Which means out of these 4,400 people, many people will be buying. Are you with me? From those 33 lakh people who, who type shoes, do you think many people will be buying? But I can guarantee you that from those 4,400 people who've typed red running shoes, many people will be buying. Yes, yes? With me? Interesting? Yes. So step one, find keywords. Step two, find search volume. Step three, find keywords with a good buying intention, where the customer is really going to buy. And step four, map these keywords to your website. Okay? Does every website look like that? On the right, can you see the image? Right? So on every website, there's a page title, there's a URL, there's a heading, there's some content. What you need to do is you need to stuff your keywords in this content. Are you with me? Does every website look like that? Yes or no? Okay. I'm going to give you a 20 second exercise. Okay. I want you all to read this one website. Okay. And tell me what's going on. 20 seconds on the clock. Read this. This is a blog article I found. I want you to read this. And if you found out what I'm trying to ask you, raise your hand and tell me what you found out.
Anyone? Anyone? Yeah. Tell me. If you're going to speak so softly, how will I hear you, my friend? Yeah, so what has happened out here? Under 500 rupees is? You're searching for sports shoes under? Under 500. Right? Anybody else? Yes, speak. Huh? Year. In the year 2020. Okay, anyone else? Huh? 10 best. Better reviews? Eight. Five star rating? Very nice answer. What's your name? Vimal. Vimal. Okay, Vimal. let's give him a national applause. I'd like you all to pay attention now. The person who wrote this article knows SEO. Okay? Look at the number of times he has written the following words and don't laugh. Okay? Control your smile when I show it to you. Okay, now see. If you see the URL, the URL says top best sports shoes for men under 500. Okay, if you see the title, again he is repeating the same keywords. 10 best sports shoes under rupees 500. Then if you read further, it again says sports shoes under rupees 500. And if you again read further, it says if you are looking for the best shoes under rupees 500. If you further go, it again says I will tell you about the 10 best sports shoes you can buy under rupees 500. And if you go further, it again tells you, so after extensive research, I am writing, I am going to read a list of the top 10 best sports shoes for men under rupees 500. Did you see what he's trying to do? What's he trying to do? He's trying to stuff keywords. Are you with me? Who is he doing this for? For who? For Google. For the search engine. Okay, but tell me honestly guys, when I just showed you this article just like this, did it feel like he was repeating the keywords many times? Yes. Like purposely? Yes. But if I wouldn't have told you this, uske pehle, ke map keywords to your website, you might not have realized. But today when I'm talking to you as a digital marketer, you definitely have a realization that oh shit, you know, he's repeating the keyword every time and hence when you go to Google and you search for best sports shoes under rupees 500, his website comes first. Is this making sense to you guys? Basic SEO. Basic, basic, basic SEO. Right? So, four steps in SEO. Identify keywords. Check their search volume. Find their buying intention. Don't make a mistake out here. Most people make a mistake out here. Find the right buying intention keywords and then map them to your website. Are you with me? In this process, guys, I have managed to now explain search as a concept. SEO and SEM. With me, everybody? And now let's move to something fun, which you guys will relate to, because I'm seeing less smiles right now. Okay, everybody smile? Give me a smile. Huh? The, yeah, say yes, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, awesome. So what I'm going to do is, now I'm going to talk about a subject which interests you, which is? But I'm going to start with an example, okay? Uh, I don't want to talk about Facebook and Instagram, but let's take an example. Tell me which brand this is. Which brand? Which? Yeah. Netflix, right? I'm sure you all have heard of Netflix and chill, right? So I'm going to talk about Netflix and I'm going to tell you that I had a friend, okay, who used to never ever, has never paid for subscription on Netflix. He always watches it for free. Are you, anyone like that out here? <laughs> Okay, but he once went to the Netflix website. He once went to the Netflix website. And then what happened to him? Do you know what happened to him after that? Huh? Everywhere where he went. Okay, for example, he went to Facebook. Okay, he saw ads of which brand? He went to Instagram. He saw ads of which brand? He went to YouTube. He saw ads of which brand? Does this ever happen to you guys? Yes, sir. Yes, yes or no? Yes, yes. Excellent, right? 
What I'm trying to say is that people when he went to Netflix and he did not get the subscription, but then he started getting ads every day asking him to sign up for Netflix. Every freaking day. Would you like to learn how to do that? Yes, sir. yes, yes or no? Yes, yes. Would, I, would you like me to make it live right now for you? Yes, I can show you how to make an ad right now in five minutes. Would you like to learn? Yes, yes. yes, yes. If you don't say it loudly, I am not with you. Yes, yes. Okay, awesome. Let's go. Let's try. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to make a sponsored ad. Can you see sponsor on the top? Yes. You, I'm sure you all see sponsored ads on Instagram and Facebook every day of your lives. Yes. Let me show you how to make a sponsored ad right now. Anyone out here in the audience has ever made a sponsored ad? Anyone in the audience out here ever made a sponsored ad? Anyone? Boost post? Maybe? None? Okay. So I'm going to show you how to make a sponsored ad right now. Okay? But when I show you how to make this sponsored ad, the one thing that shouldn't happen is that you shouldn't get scared. Okay? I promise you what I will show you right now is creepy but cool. Okay, it's super creepy what I'm going to show you. I hope you guys still will use Instagram after what I show you today. Okay, because it's super creepy. Today, what I'm going to do over the next five minutes right now is I am going to show you, okay, I am going to show you what kind of targeting options Facebook has. What kind of? What options? Audience targeting. What ta what targeting? Audience. Targeting options. Okay. Can you tell me, does anybody in the country know how many people own a OnePlus phone in Coimbatore? Huh? How many people in Coimbatore own a OnePlus? How many? We'll find out now in the next two minutes. Can you tell me? How many people in Coimbatore have their birthday in their next seven days? You'll find out now in the next one minute. Can you tell me how many people in Coimbatore are going to get married in the next six months? You'll find out in the next few minutes. Can you tell me how many people have parents, are parents, and who has a kid under one year of age? Under this one year of age? You'll find out now. Can you tell me how many human beings are in one kilometer radius of where we are sitting? You want to know? Yes. Huh? Yes. Yes? yes. I can tell you how many 21 year old men are sitting in one kilometer radius of where we are sitting. I can tell you how many 21 year old women are sitting in a one kilometer radius of where we are sitting. Want to try? Okay, so I have my colleague with me, Aditya. He's a master trainer on Facebook ads. Just today I am talking and he's going to help me. Generally, he takes this subject up. Okay, so thank you for assisting me today, Aditya. But, uh, Guru India, this is the first time we're doing this thing. So, <laughs> okay, say that, 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 say that. I want you all to pay attention, okay? Uh, I must tell you guys. Um, it generally takes me like, it takes one of us if we're actually teaching this 30 hours to teach this. I'm going to do this in 5 minutes. Okay? My goal is not to teach, my goal is to open your eyes. Are you with me? If you haven't paid attention to me in the entire session till now, it's absolutely fine. But these next 5 minutes, okay, I urge you for your own selfish goals in the future, pay attention. Are we together? Yeah, if you are someone who wants a high paying career, pay attention to what I'm going to do in the next few minutes. Okay, so this is Facebook's dashboard. Any advertiser can get access to this. Anybody who wants to advertise gets access to this. It's for free. You can advertise, I can advertise. I mean, you, you can't advertise for free, but you can access this dashboard for free. Are we together? Okay, now pay attention to the targeting, guys. Pay attention to the targeting. Which country am I targeting right now? India. India. What age group? Adi? What age group? 18 to 65. And look what Facebook is telling me that in India, between the age group of 18 and 65, 
Look where my cursor is right now. How many people are using Facebook and Instagram? Read the number. Can you see the number? I like it. How many? 36 crores to 42 crore Indians. It's telling you that roughly 36 crore Indians are using Facebook and Instagram and WhatsApp. Who owns WhatsApp? Who owns WhatsApp? Facebook. Who owns Instagram? Facebook. Who owns Facebook? Facebook? All owned by Meta, whose stock price is down by 48% over the last five years. Screw that. But everything is owned by Meta. Are you with me? Okay. Now, I'm going to go. Okay. Do you want to know how many people in Coimbatore are there firstly? Let, huh? Yes. Okay, so let's change the city right now and let's make it Coimbatore. Excellent. And now it's telling you go a little down. Yeah, excellent. Zoom in more. It's telling you that in the city of Coimbatore, can you see the age group out here? What's the age group? How many people are there in Coimbatore? 11 lakhs to 13 lakhs. Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp users. How many lakhs? Now let's find out how many. What's your age? 21. Let's find out how many 21 and 22 year olds are there in Coimbatore. Aha. Uh -huh. How many? 1,16,002 Okay, let's just check Let's see How many women are there? Since I see more boys out here How many women? Okay, the gender ratio is a little messed up Boys, find the girl first <laughs> Are you with me? Everybody? Yeah? Now, uh, let's remove the gender Adi Let's find out, let's find out that from these one lakh people, okay, how many of these guys have a birthday in the next seven days? Would you like to know? From these one lakh people, let's find out how many people have a birthday in the next seven days. If you have a birthday in the next seven days, one of the brands who would love to advertise would be Chroma. You know, how many of you guys have purchased a new phone on your birthday? Anyone? Me? For sure. Or a PlayStation or a, or a digital gadget? On your birthday? Anyone out here? Okay. What do you buy on your birthday? New dress. Huh? Clothes? Let's see. Now we need to increase the target. Yeah, yeah. Uh, make the age group 21 to 25. I'm gonna make the age group 8 to 8. <laughs> okay, awesome. Can you see, go down, little down, little further. Can you see, I have gone to Facebook and I have told Facebook, hey, tell me how many people have an upcoming birthday. Hover over upcoming birthday, let them read the text. If you can read the text on the right out here, it says people who are going to have their birthday within the next one week. How many people is it? How many? So now Chroma will know that there are 4,000 people who would like to buy or Westside or some brand will know, yeah, there are 4,000 people who should buy some new clothes. They have a party to go to. Are you with me? Yes. Okay, let's forget birthday. Let's find out how many people own which phone? OnePlus? Yeah, let's try. Go to uh, Browse, Behaviors, uh, down, 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 further down. Yeah, no, 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 how many people? Now we know in Coimbatore, roughly 10,000 people own a OnePlus. Can you believe it? How do they know this data? 
How do they know this data? You don't need to sign in. Facebook is damn smart. Whichever phone your app is downloaded on, they know which phone it is. That's about it. Is this interesting to you guys or no? You can literally target iPhone users. You can target Samsung users. You can target OnePlus users. You can actually target. Let's show them a wedding. Remove OnePlus. Let's find out. Let's change the age group and let's make it 24 to 33. Marriageable age. I'm just stating. Let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. Just look at the options, okay? I'm gonna go to demographics. Come to, uh, go to down. Look at the options. Just look at the options. Everybody, open your eyes. Look at the options. Life events. Go down. Little down. Look at the options. Don't click on anything. Just look at the options. Look at the options they have. Newly engaged, one year. Newly engaged, three months. Newly engaged, six months. Newly wed, one year. Newly wed, three months. Newly wed, six months. That's the kind of laser focused targeting you can do via Facebook. How does Instagram know if you're newly engaged? Just a photo. Or even if someone, even if your friend has put up a photo of you saying my best friend's getting engaged and tagged you, boom, that's it. Right? They will put you into a category like this and make you advertise after that. Okay, let me show you parents. Check it out guys, just read. Look at the bifurcation they do to target parents. New parents with babies 0 to 12 months. Parents with toddlers come down. 1 to 2 years of age. Parents with preschoolers 3 to 5 years of age. Parents with primary school age children, 6 to 8 years of age. Are you seeing this? Because your parent must have put up a photo of their baby and that's about it. You can target. Is this interesting or no? Yes or no? Fun? Now, 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 now. Now let's take the game one notch higher. Let's take the game one notch higher. Okay. Change the age group from uh, 18 to 50. Okay, now let's find out. Let's find out how many people. Let me think. Give me some suggestions. What do you guys want to find out? Anything? Huh? I'm saying now let's use dual combination. Dual combination. Dual combination means, let's see how many people, um, let's see how many people own a OnePlus, own a OnePlus, like the brand Gucci, and also have an upcoming birthday. Let's change the targeting to India first. Are you with me? We're going to use a three-dimensional targeting now. We're going to use a combination. Okay. We've changed the targeting to India to get some better numbers for you guys. Okay, let's go down. Now guys, I'm going to put down out here how many people own a OnePlus. Okay, so there are 71 lakh Indians who own a OnePlus. Now, I'm going to click on narrow audience. Yeah. And now I'm going to say, how many of these people have an upcoming birthday from the 71 lakh? Can you see? It will further narrow down. Okay, I don't think we'll find it. But can you, I'm not going to do three level targeting, but I'm doing two level targeting. Can you see this? Now we know how many people in India own a OnePlus and also have an upcoming birthday in the next seven days. Just try one level of targeting. Let's see how many people like the brand Gucci. Have you heard of the brand Gucci? Let's see. No, no, no. Interest. Can you see? Now we know that there are 77,000 people in the city or in the country who own a OnePlus, which means they have a buying power. Are you with me? Then we know they also have a birthday. And we also know that they like the brand Gucci. 
So if I was Gucci, I would not target anyone besides these 77,000 people. Is this making sense to you all? Yes, yes, no. Interesting? Let me quickly make an ad for you. So this is how you do targeting. Now I'll just show you how to make an ad. You can choose placements, 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 placements. Okay, you can select where you want to advertise guys. You can select where you want to advertise. Okay, you can choose if you want to advertise on Facebook, Instagram, Messenger. I'm going to only advertise on Instagram today. Remove everything else. Are you with me everybody? Are you having fun? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay, so I only want to advertise on Instagram and I only want to advertise on Instagram stories. Remove feeds and even remove reels. I don't want to do reels also. Only Instagram stories. Can you see? So now I'm telling Instagram, Mujhe add sirf Instagram stories pe dikhana hai. Go down. Let's make the ad. Very simple guys. In one minute my ad will be ready. Please choose any creative you like. We're gonna advertise my colleague Aditya, okay? We're putting his face out there. <laughs> okay. Are you seeing guys? That's the ad. Write any text you like. And just show them the freedom. Are you guys with me? Everybody? Can you see? All I've done is I've added an image, chose my targeting, and that's it. My ad is ready. Any questions? Was this fun? Not fun. Fun? Not fun. fun. Cool? Not cool. cool. Creepy? Not creepy. creepy. <laughs> but still fun? Yes, yes? Yes, yes. Ah, nice. Okay, interesting. Okay, guys, so this is how the ad looks like. Can you see? And now this ad is going to go to everybody who likes Gucci, who has an upcoming birthday, and who owns a OnePlus. I mean, the creative is some, the image is wrong, but you all have to choose the right image. Are you with me? Okay, excellent. Let's go back to the PPD. <coughs> Concentration levels back with me. Yes? Okay, let's move to my next topic for the day. Have fun, have fun, have fun. Are you with me everybody? Yes, yes or no? Yes, yes. I want to hear it loudly. Yes. Okay, let's move to the next topic. Okay, and now I'm going to talk about some secrets of digital marketing. What I did in the first half an hour, 40 minutes, is I took you all through some basics of digital marketing. Are you with me? Yes. But learn some new basics, right? Learn how to do SEO, yes, yes. yes, yes. Learn targeting options on Facebook, yes, yes. yes, yes. Learn that you can get a high paying job while doing Google Ads. Yes yes? yes, yes? Okay, now let me show you some secrets of digital marketing. Okay? Now I have a very interesting Kon Banega Kirurpati question for you. Okay, I'm going to give you four options. You have to choose A, B, C, or D. So the question I have for you, my friends, is where should you start your marketing efforts from? If you've read a book called Kotler, Philip Kotler, yes. you should probably know this. Okay, so my question to you is, where should you start your marketing efforts from? And da -da, option A, B, C, D, okay? A, B, C, D. Option A is awareness. Should you make people aware about your product? Option B is interest. Option C is desire. Have you ever seen this? Yes, sir. Have you ever seen this funnel? Yes, sir. It's called a marketing funnel. Anyone, everyone's aware about this? Okay, even if you're not, if you're not, then I'm sorry. If you are, then that's awesome. But this is a marketing funnel, okay? And my question to you guys is, where should you start your marketing efforts from? Option A, awareness. Option B, interest. Option C, desire. Option D, action. Where should you start your marketing efforts from? Where? Ah, awareness, right, very good. Who taught you that? Interest. Who taught you that? Action. Who taught you that? 
Yeah. If you read Philip Kotler's book, you know what he says? Where to start marketing from? Okay. Let me, let me, let me, let me give you all the concepts of these very easily. Okay. Hey, come on, stay, pay attention. Generally, it is said that when you are doing marketing, if you do marketing to the people in the awareness section, there are generally, just for example, there are one lakh people in awareness. Okay. But these guys don't know anything about your product. They don't know anything about your product or your service. Your goal is to make them aware. Are you with me? Because you do some marketing efforts to people in the awareness segment, roughly from those 1 lakh people, 10,000 people move to the next segment known as interest. But are they going to buy your product right now? Or are they just slightly interested? Buy or slightly interested? Slightly interested. Are you with me? Are they going to buy from you tomorrow? Next year? Maybe. But surely? No, because you do some marketing efforts to 10,000 people who are in the interest stage, roughly 1,000 people move to the next stage, known as desire. How many people? How many people? At the back, how many people? At the back, last bench, how many people? Ah, good. Okay, so 1,000 people, okay, and they are in a stage that they want to buy. They want to? But they are generally comparing. They want to buy and they are saying, hey, should I buy an iPhone or should I buy a Samsung phone? Are you with me? Should I date this boy or should I date that boy? Should I date this girlfriend or that one? Just cracking a joke, okay, to get you guys to listen to me. But everybody in life, before they choose what they want to buy, they are always evaluating. Yes or no? Like for example, I wanted to buy a watch. I was evaluating should I buy a smart watch or should I buy some other brand smart watch. Like my goal was smart watch karina. Brand A or brand B, not sure. Are you with me? Yes, yes? yes. And because you do some marketing to these thousand people in the desire stage, roughly hundred people move to a stage known as what's their stage? Action. And these hundred people are just about to buy from you. They are just about to buy from you. Are you with me? Yes. Yeah. So let me repeat quickly. A lakh people in awareness do some marketing, move to 10,000 people in interest, do some marketing to them, move to 1,000 people in desire, do some marketing to them, move to 100 people in action, do some marketing to them. Are you with me? Yes. Now, where do, you, where do you think you should start your marketing efforts from? Awareness. From where? Awareness. Yeah, most of you guys are awareness. Let me reframe the question. Let me reframe the question. I give you, let's say, you have the last eight hours of your marketing career remaining. How many hours remaining? Eight hours. You're gonna die tomorrow. Whatever. <laughs> but let's take an example. You have the last eight hours of your marketing career remaining. How many hours? Eight hours. Ah, okay. Now I have a question for you. Out of all these stages, which customers would you like to talk to? Which customer? Action. Which? Action. Why action? Because who has the highest chance of buying? The customers who are in which stage? Excellent. Most people forget this. Most people try doing awareness create karo, awareness create karo. Abhi koi jarurat nahi hai awareness create karne ki. Awareness hai market mein. Yes, let's say you are the first company to ever invent a drone. You know, before drones were invented. Then you need to do what? But if you're going to start selling ties, do you need to do awareness? There are already people who want to buy ties. Go find them. So if you have the last eight hours of your marketing career remaining, I would totally target people in the desire and action stage. Because the highest chance that these guys will buy the fastest from me. Are you with me? Yes, yes. yes, yes. Making sense? Yes, yes. Let's say if you were the first person to ever invent a camera or a drone, yes, you need to do awareness. But today if you launch a new phone, you don't need to do so much awareness. There are already people who want to buy a phone. Go find them. Are you with me? And that's what traditional marketing and digital marketing differ from. Traditional marketing will teach you go do awareness. Digital marketing will teach you start from desire or action. 
Are you with me? Let me give you a few examples. But before I give you a few examples, okay, I want to ask you and let me see who's the smartest person in this room. I'm asking you a question. I'm happy to give an internship to anybody who's able to answer this question. It's a very simple question on the screen. Okay, but there's only one answer I'm looking for. I'm happy to give anybody an internship who gets this right and who actually feels for the cause of digital marketing. Okay, the question is, if you did awareness without action, what would happen? If you did a lot of awareness marketing, television ads, newspaper ads, without action marketing, like without talking to the customers at the bottom, what would happen? Somebody else Somebody converts. Else. Yeah, what? A competitors will take them. Excellent. What's your name? Danush Pray. Huh? Danush. Let's give a nice round of applause. And I think there was somebody else also who had a similar answer, right? Who was that? Nice. You guys are internship worthy. Yeah? Point being, guys, if you do a lot of awareness, okay? What do you need to know? I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Another recent example. Uh, I think it was in the IPL which was going on. My grandfather and me were watching TV, IPL on a Sunday. At 7.30, TV pe ad aata hai. Hindi? Is he? Yeah. TV pe ad aata hai. Dog. Kiska? Pizza Hut ka. Kiska? Pizza Hut. Sade saad baje. 7.30. Sunday. I got hungry. Pizza looked yummy. Okay. So what time was the ad? Which brand? What did it make? What happened in my stomach? I got? Very nice. So 7.30 p.m. I see a Pizza Hut ad. And now I have made up a mind. I've gone and told my wife, Babe, we're going to eat pizza tonight. Okay. But now something changes. At 8 p.m. Before I'm about to place the order. Generally my food time is 8.45. Before I place the order. Okay. Before I place the order. I get an SMS. From a brand known as Domino's, which is buy one get one free. Have you ever got those SMSs? Yes. yes or no? Yes, yes. Yes. Now tell me, who took the sale away? Domino's. Ah, but who created the hunger? Pizza. Are you realizing what I'm saying? Yes. Who 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 made my mind aware that I wanted to eat a pizza? Pizza. But who sucked out the sale from the bottom when I was actually hungry? Domino's. Ah, are you realizing? Yes. If you do a lot of awareness marketing, can be very harmful for you. Because there's a high chance that aapne awareness create kiya, but koi aur laddu leke kha gaya. Is that making sense to you? Yeah? Oh, sorry. All I'm trying to say is that somebody else, I don't know how to translate a phrase like this, but my point being, Somebody else did the awareness, but somebody else yeah. took the Tomorrow, if a thousand digital marketing schools open in India, everything. is that good for me or yeah. bad for me? Bad for me? It's good. Damn good. Damn good. Open one million, I would say. You know why? Because I'm confident about one thing. That they all will do what? And when they will move the customer to the desire stage, you know what will happen? I will come. <laughs> is this making sense to you guys? But business has to be thought like this. You don't need to always do awareness. Let the competitor do the awareness. Right? But when the customer is right about to buy, show up yourself out there. Say, hey, I'm slightly cheaper. I'm slightly better. I have these unique features. I'll give you customer guarantee. I'll give you warranty. Blah, blah, blah. Take the sale away. Boom. Making sense? Yes, yes? Very interesting. Let's go ahead, my friends. And now, let me test how many of you guys are good at math. How many of you think you are good at math? Raise your hands. Aisa kaisa koi bhi nahi hai chill out. Normal math. Regular math. Raise your hands. Okay. Read the statement on the screen. Can you guys read? I'm going to read it out. The statement is very simple. And this is where real you know, my second half of today's session, which is now, I'll finish in the next 10-15 minutes. It's digital marketing secrets. I'm talking about advanced digital marketing. What most marketers forget to do, what most marketers make a mistake is they do awareness marketing. But that's not necessary. Start from desire and action. And here comes the second mistake. 
But before I tell you all what it is, read the question. There is a statement on the screen. The statement is, your website has how many visitors? How many? Ah, your website has 10,000 visitors. From those 10,000 visitors, how many leads does it generate? That means inquiries. People who inquire on your website. How many inquiries did you generate? Okay. And from these inquiries, subsequently, how many customers do you get? Let's repeat. How many website visitors? How many inquiries? How many customers? And now let's test you. Okay. Let's test you. The question is, what if you wanted to generate 20 customers? What if you wanted to generate 20 customers from next month? What should you do? Here is the table that I showed you. What should you do? Yes? How much? So what's your name? Yeah, you. Huh? Akshara. Akshara is saying that you should get, you should increase your total monthly website visitors. How many website visitors? 20,000. Is she correct? Is she correct? No. Some people are saying yes. What's your name? Sandhya. No. Why not? You should what? Increase the inquiries. You have two options. You have two options. Okay. Digital marketers who are new. Oh, what's your name again? Akshara. 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 Uh, answer was wrong. Okay. But digital marketers who are new who are not so sure yet about digital marketing, what they would try to do is they would try to increase the total number of visitors who come to their website. Are you with me? But seasoned digital marketers, smart digital marketers will change this. You know what they will do? From the same 10,000 monthly website visitors, they will try next month to get 200 inquiries from the same 10,000 visitors and subsequently get 10 customers. From the same 10,000 monthly website visitors, they will try to get 300 inquiries and subsequently get 30 sales per month. Looking something like this. Is it making, is it making, is it making sense to you all? Yes, yes? yes? Instead of increasing the total website traffic, a digital marketer has to increase something known as conversion rate. For every 100 people who come to the website, how many people inquire? Previously, in example 1, for every 100 people who came to the website, one person was inquiring. In example 2, for every 100 people who are coming to the website, how many people are inquiring? 2. And in example 3, for every 100 people who come to the website, how many people are inquiring? Are you seeing there's something known as conversion rate? 1% which means 1 out of every 100, 2% which means 2 out of every 100, and 3% which means 3 out of every 100. Are you with me? Now, how do you do something like this? By showing the result in the first conversion. By? Showing the result in the first conversion. By showing the result in the first conversion. First month conversion. Ah, okay. So yes? We can also do remarketing. Very nice. You are a smart boy. Give a nice round of applause. <laughs> That's what we come on the slides now. Okay. But here are a few things that you can do. I'll show you very quickly. For example, I'll show you what's good and what's bad. I'll show you in terms of SEO. Okay. <clears throat> Remember SEO? This? What comes after paid ads? Pay attention to what you can do. I'm going to give you an example of a brand known as Airtel. Heard of Airtel? Yes. Yeah, Airtel Broadband. So, have you heard of it? Yes. Awesome. Guys, I want you to pay attention. There is a keyword out here. What's the keyword? The last one out here? Review. Airtel Broadband. Review. How many people search for it per month? 2,400. So Airtel Broadband Review, 2,400 people search for it per month. What can you say about these 2,400 people? Are they going to buy Airtel Broadband soon? Yes or no? Yes or no? The fact that they are searching on Google Airtel Broadband Review, the fact that they are searching on Google Airtel Broadband Review, are they going to buy? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. But see what happens. I do Guys, check what happens. 
Check what happens. Just check what happens. Okay? 2,400 people per month. When you type on Google Airtel Broadband Review, the first thing that comes on Google is a website known as mouthshut.com and how many star rating? How many votes? Now if you were someone who went to Google and typed Airtel Broadband Review, <clears throat> would you buy? What would happen now? What would happen now? Tell me. Huh? Look for? You would start looking for alternatives. Is that making sense? This is called a customer in the action stage. He was about to buy from you. Just before buying from you, he went to Google to check for your review. He typed Airtel Broadband Review. How many of you guys read reviews before you buy? Show me. Everybody does. So these 2400 people went to Google typed Airtel Broadband Review and saw such a bad review. Would they buy? Yes or no? Exactly. Similarly, I was researching for, I was uh, trying to make friends with a career counselling brand, very popular career counselling brand in Mumbai, it's called IDP, okay, I, I'm not sure if you guys have heard, for, heard of it, so I was looking for it, I typed IDP and I was looking for their reviews, can you see there are two reviews, how many stars, would you buy from a brand like this, higher chance or lower chance, is that making sense? What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to optimize for every hundred people who are about to buy from me, instead of one customer buying from me, make two customers buy from me. Is this making sense? Yeah? Something as simple as SEO. Look at Google Ads. If you don't remember Google Ads, do you remember this? When you type something on Google, we'll end in five minutes, guys. So pay attention. Okay, can you all see? Okay, Google Ads. Look at how people are doing. What have I typed on Google search right now? What have I typed? Vodafone broadband plan. Okay. And I'm getting an ad from another another brand at the bottom. Which brand is that? Can you guys see out here? I have gone to Google and typed what? Vodafone broadband plan. And I'm getting an ad from Vodafone which says, get benefits worth 20,000. You know, when someone comes and tells me that I'm going to get benefits worth 20,000, I know it's a scam. I'm paying you 500 rupees, how can you give me benefits worth 20,000? Are you with me? But there's another ad at the bottom which says Spectra high speed internet at speed up to 500 Mbps. Are you seeing which brand was I going to buy from? But there's a chance that I might move to Spectra. Are you realizing what I'm saying? There's a chance. So what is this brand doing? It is advertising on competitive keywords. You know what Sir said in the start? You search for Firebird, you'll have Great Lakes advertising to you. Are you realizing? Yes, so I'm searching for my brand, but I'm having another brand actually give me an ad. Let me show you a cooler example. Okay, check this example out. I went to Google and I typed what? iPhone 6s. See Kiska ad and read what happened. Who am I getting an ad from? What does it say? What's the first word? Awkward. You obviously mean S6. Samsung.com. Are you with me? Is this cool or not cool? Okay. This is how you get customers. Okay. Instead of trying to advertise your own, whoever's typed iPhone 6 says, guys, he's going to buy an iPhone. Get him. Check out how other brands do this. I went to Google and I typed Zara jeans for men. And I got these ads. Have you ever clicked on these ads? Yes or no? And you know what? I saw Zara jeans for men, but I clicked on this brand, Levi's. Can you see this? I clicked on Levi's. So which brand was I going to buy from? Which brand did I end up buying from? So tell me, is this awareness marketing or action marketing? Because the customer already wants to buy. But this time he doesn't want to buy from my brand. Which brand does he want to buy from? But just 
before he buys from Zara, I will showcase myself to them and I will take it from there. Is this making sense? Yes, yes. Okay, awesome. And this is what you do to get users to come to your website. But after users come to your website, okay, tell me one thing, if somebody came to your shop, okay, if somebody came to your shop ever, would you let them go without knowing their name? Would you let them go without taking down their phone number? Would you let them go without taking down their email ID? You would be a really stupid shop owner if somebody came to your shop and you did not take their name number email ID. Are you with me? I'm going to show you three simple techniques to take people's phone numbers, name numbers, email ID. Something like pop-ups. Do you get these? You go to a website, take an email ID. Something like a sticky footer. Can you see? On the website, what is the button out here? Instant call. Are you understanding? Get people to call you if they come to your website. Or if people come to your website, have something known as a? A chatbot. A chatbot. And look how this chatbot is working. I was trying to make a reservation at a hotel and it's saying, sorry for the Raju at Kaju, but anyway. It asked me for my email address, I said Raju at Kaju.com. It asked me for my phone number and I also gave my phone number. Are you seeing? The persons come to my website and I'm collecting their name, number, email ID via my chatbot. Are you with me? So chatbot, forms, pop-ups. What else did I say? Even a sticky photo. Are you with me? Awesome. And after the and do you guys buy when you instantly uh, do you guys buy when you go to a website for the first time? No. Yes or no? No. Nobody buys when they go to a website for the first time. Nobody. How do you make them buy? Very simple. And with this, I'll come to the end of my presentation. Stay with me for one two minutes. Okay. After users leave your website. One of the most important thing you should do. Can you read the font in the top? What does it say? Remarketing. Remarketing. Does it happen to you that you go to a website after you leave the website, the same website ka product ka ad follows you on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, everywhere. Does it happen to you? Yes. Yes. yes? yes or no? Yes. Similarly. Yes. For example, I was trying to look for a course on Howard. Okay. And every day I'm getting this ad from Howard. Can you see this? Yeah. I was trying to buy a bag for my friend. Every day I'm getting an ad for a bag. Okay. I went to this website IDP to find education counselors and every day I'm getting these ads. Are you with me? This is how IID does an ad. If you ever come to IID's website, it will say, hey, you only do PG ones. Do it from the right institute for digital marketing. Are you with me? Not even Instagram ads, we even do YouTube ads where we show testimonials of our old students. Are you seeing? Ads like these. Okay. Or check out, or you can even do email marketing. Okay, so once a user comes to your website, you have their name, number, email ID, you can even do email marketing. You know, Amazon has sent us an email, Great Indian Diwali sale. You can also do SMS marketing. Which brand has sent this SMS? Nika. Nika. And it's saying, hey, last day today, grab up to 50% off at Nika's payday sale. Or you can also do WhatsApp marketing. Look at Chroma. It sent me a WhatsApp which says, hi, all screen, all colorful, the new iPad is here. Are you realizing what I'm saying? So you can do remarketing ads on Google, on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram. You can do email marketing. You can do SMS marketing. You can do WhatsApp marketing. And when and when and only and only if you do all of these, will you get a customer? Are we clear? This is the concept of digital marketing. Okay. How do some brands do this? Okay. Uh, basically, before I go ahead and I'll just show you one example before I end. When you are doing digital marketing, the real secret of doing digital marketing is this. You need to ensure for every hundred people who visit your website, more people view the category page. For every hundred people who view the category page, more people view the product page. For every hundred people who view the product, if previously two people were adding to cart, ensure now three people are adding to cart. When every hundred people add to the cart, if previously four people were checking out, ensure now six people are checking out and finishing the purchase. Are you with me? That is digital marketing. For every hundred, how can you get more? For every hundred is just a, just an understanding. Are you with me, everybody? Yes? Yes, yes? Okay, awesome. 
Just some tricks. I went to a website shut up by Nike shoes. Can you see what's written at the bottom? Only trying to create what? Urgency. Right? Look at the next one. Okay. Nike. How many sizes left? Only one left. Okay. Look at the next one. Look at this website. It says suggested price three hundred and seventy-five dollars. Our price one one nine dollars. Are you seeing what they're doing? Price anchoring. This is called. Okay. Next one. You see, very often when you're booking on Zomato and Swiggy, they'll show you a food menu, and then they'll show you one option, and then they'll show you the other option and say what? Most popular. Most popular. On Swiggy or Zomato, it will say best seller. Are you with me? All of these are methods to get a customer to go faster. You see, I went to a website to buy an ebook, and it said time left to download 19 minutes and 12 seconds, giving me a timer. All of these things do are done to improve urgency. Okay. <clears throat> Look at this website, Booking.com. Have you ever used Booking.com? Tried using it? Okay. If not, just look what they're saying. Uber, they're saying, "Hey, we price match." Here, they're saying, "Great for two travelers." I changed the same setting, and I said, "On three travelers, this changed automatically," and I said, "Great for three travelers." Are you with me? Again, it says, "We price match." Awesome. Excellent location. One of our best sellers in New York. ये क्या सब true है क्या? क्या ये सब true है? मुझे पता नहीं. But क्या? I mean, is this all true? Yes or no? I don't know. But is it trying to increase? Is is it trying to improve my chances of buying? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Excellent. Okay, guys. And that kind of brings me to an end, and I'm going to ask you the last three questions. If you agree with my questions, what will you say? Yes, yes. What will you say? Yes, yes. Okay, let's try. Do you guys click on the first link on Google search mostly? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. yes, yes. Do you sometimes click on these ads? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. yes, yes. Do you guys get emails from brands? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. yes, yes. Has it ever happened to you that you went to a website like Airbnb.com and then after you visit the website, instantly you start seeing ads of the same brand on your Instagram? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. yes. Do you read reviews before you buy? Yes, yes. Do you sometimes follow influencers and see the products that they are promoting? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. yes, yes. Anyone knows who's influencer is? No. Okay. Read the next line. Thanks for agreeing that you all are a victim to digital marketing. Yes yes. yes, yes. Excellent. Okay. And before I end my today's slide, I just want you guys to rethink economics. You want to say economics? I'll ask you a simple question. If the demand of a product is very high, the demand is very high, but the supply is very low. What happens to price of the product? Increases. Price increases. increases. Why? Okay. One Bluetooth ticker. All of you are going to buy it. What will happen to the price of this Bluetooth ticker? Increases. Will it increase or decrease? Will it decrease or increase? Increase. Increase because we all want to buy it, right? Just like that. We're in the year 2022. Today, all these careers. I don't wish to wish, wish to demean any career. But if you look at any career, accounting, finance, regular marketing, regular HR, any of these careers, there is great demand. Okay, demand means there are many people who are giving jobs out, but there is also great supply of talent. Are you with me? Today, if I want to hire a lawyer, or if I want to hire a chartered accountant, can that chartered accountant be the age 35? Why? Do you find chartered accountants? Do you find lawyers at the age of 35? Are lawyers of the age of 45? Yes. Are lawyers of the age of 55? Yes. Are lawyers of the age of 65? Yes. Okay. I want to hire a HR professional. Can I find an HR professional who's age is 25? Yes. 35? Yes. 45? Yes. 55? Yes. 65? 75? No. Why not? हो सकता है ना? But now, but now, 
Digital marketers. Does every business want to go online? Yes, yes. yes, yes. For that, who will they need to hire? Is there that much talent available in the market? No. First of all, can I find a 60 year old digital marketer? No. Can I find a 50 year old digital marketer? No. Can I find a 40 year old digital marketer? No. Can I find a 30 year old digital marketer? Yes. Maybe. Half the population of the country are not digital savvy. Hence, they can't be digital marketers. High demand, low supply. Are you understanding? High demand, low supply. In terms of economics, it's an opportunity. Are you with me? So which is why my friends, you should all learn digital marketing. Okay, and here are the last opportunities in digital marketing. If you genuinely learn digital marketing, you can be a freelancer. Anyone a freelancer out here in digital marketing? You can be a freelancer. All you need is a laptop and internet connection. You can make reels for people. You can make Instagram designs for people. You can earn in dollars. You can sit in Coimbatore. You can find clients in the US. You can do digital marketing for them from here. And instead of earning in rupees, you can earn it. Or you can become an influencer. Anybody out here wants to be an influencer? A content creator online? Anybody? What? Okay, okay, one, two people, awesome. You can be an influencer if you learn digital marketing. If you have a family business, you can take your family business online. I'm assuming your family business is an offline business. Or you can get an internship or a job. Or you can start your own business online. Very easy. But these are all the things that you can do if you learn with skill. With skill. Um, thank you so much for your time, everybody. I hope you find it enjoy. Generally, just to test if my entire talk was fun or not, I tested basis how loud my audience is. So I'm going to ask you all to say two words. And depending on how happy you are, how loud you are, we'll decide if you genuinely enjoyed today's session. So which are those two words? Yes. yes. So I want to now, uh, I'm going to say yes, yes once and you're going to say it one time after that. Depending on how loud and how energetic you are, I will know how my session went. So if you really think you got some information from me, be loud. Okay? So yes, yes? Yes, yes! Thank you so much, everyone.